Hello, I'm calling from the trip. I'd like to confirm a call. Yeah, you're running around in two hours. I'm coming up on deadline. How much money was involved? Was it over a thousand dollars? Was it over ten thousand dollars? trying to bug you, Mr. Robinson. I just thought maybe we could talk a little. Miss Newman, I've been a trial lawyer for 30 years. I recognize an adversary proceeding whenever I'm involved in one. I merely came in here for a drink. We just came in here for a drink, too. Didn't we? Well, I just thought in exchange for passing the peanuts, you might want to tell me if you uh, enjoy always being up to your ears in controversy. Not at this minute, no. But you do admit you enjoy having your cases end up on page one. I just do my job. You're the people who put me there. But you have to admit, you do go out of your way. Your Honor, rule Miss Newman out of order. And uh, put a drink on my tab. Court's adjourned. Was she, Dan? I just thought I'd take advantage of a chance meeting. Thought maybe he would answer a question or two. The only question a guy wants an answer to in a bar like this is your place or mine. I can't go home with you. You know I gotta work in the morning. <laughs> it's so dark in this garage. I keep complaining. They ought to put some more lights in here. It's dangerous. <laughs> lights? If they're so cheap, they'd probably just send you a book of matches. <laughs> you keys? Yeah. Oh. All right. Oh. It's coming from over there, I think. Oh, Art. Uh, I'll call for an ambulance. Okay. Yeah, I got, I got the last of the paper signed. Uh -huh. I sent you that form, Phil. No, no, I'm not nervous. No, I've owned houses before. Sure. Homeowner's insurance. Jeez. For one thing, I forgot. I, I'll, uh, I'll take care of it, uh... Uh, tomorrow. Uh, uh, I just want to shop around a little. Uh, listen, Phil, I have to go now. Just tell me one more time that I got a good deal. Thanks. You finally bought the house, huh? Yeah. I've been living there three years, and the house has doubled in value. The landlady decided to let me buy it before the market collapses. On the Robinson beating, it's going to be a tough time to pick one enemy from all of these. Maybe it would be quicker if we just went on the assumption that one of his friends did it. He doesn't have any friends. Oh, the Hanson divorce case, the Nazis in Chicago, the airline hijacker. He didn't pick the easy ones, did he? No, and he stepped on a lot of toes and made a lot of enemies along the way. Bob McQueen, the game show host with a big smile and the twinkly eyes? Yeah. What's his connection with Robinson? Robinson represents a consumer group suing McQueen for false advertising, fraudulent sales techniques. What kind of shape is Robinson in? Critical. He's in intensive care. It'll be a while before they know. Did he say anything? Did he give any clue at all? No, he's still unconscious. What do we do? You take enemies A to K, and you get L to Z. Oh, good. I get Art and Queen. Why is that good? Maybe I'll get to see what's behind the secret curtain. 
So come to Balboa Federal Savings and Loan when you buy your next home. You'll be pleasantly surprised at their courteous personal service. And shocked by their interest rates. Pasadena Burbank and 13 other locations. So come on down and tell them. Art McQueen sent you. Thanks. I tried that. Their interest rate was still 12%. Hi. Uh, Chet Wilkie, Archer Pools. Builders of the finest pools. I don't need a pool. Well, you won't know if you need a pool until you put one in, my friend. Only then will you realize that you've always needed one. Yeah, but then if I don't really need one, it'll be too late. <laughs> Let me show you this brochure. Hey, look, Mr. Wilkie. Chet, please. Chet, please. I don't have kids. I'm hardly here. I don't even have that many towels. What am I going to do with a pool? You are going to enjoy life to the fullest, my friend. That's what you're going to do with your pool. Okay, now let me tell you what you're going to do with your pool. Okay. Forget the pool. One thing you learn in my business, can't sell somebody something they don't want to buy. Thank you. How about a hot tub? You've got to be kidding. And you come home from the factory, your dog tired, your muscles are aching, there's dirt under your nails. I don't get dirty. I work behind a desk. You're kidding. I'm a newspaper editor. What are you doing in a neighborhood like this? Closing the door on a pool salesman. <laughs> Okay? It's my ankle. I don't think I can walk. Can you stand? Ah! I don't think so. Come on. I'll take you over to the emergency room. Oh, what is it? My back. You got a bad back? I've had a bad back since the army. A hot tub can fix that. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on AMB. On America Online, I get Hampton's Encyclopedia, Barron's Book Notes, even the entire. Welcome. AMD returns to Lou Brand. AMD returns to Lou Brand. Anything new on the Robinson beating? Talk to a lot of people who wish they'd done it. But nobody wanted to stand up and take credit. Apparently, this guy was totally oblivious to the fact that he went around alienating almost everyone he met. Well, we all don't possess the uh, sensitivity to others that you have, Rossi. That's different. I'm a reporter. A lot of times I have to creatively agitate people. It's part of my job. Uh-oh. Somebody stayed too long at the disco. You know it would be good, Adam? Go over Elliot Robinson's cases for the financial... Are you listening? I'm sorry, Lou. It's just tough to take you seriously from that position. <laughs> you look like you're at a Roman coffee break. <laughs> uh, Lou. Uh, Lou, Robinson's taken a turn for the worse. He's back on the operating table. I may join him there. I'll tell you something. If he dies, I'll have to hire the mourners. You go through the heart, McQueen? He's been on vacation all week. How can he be on vacation? I see him hosting a game show every morning. They tape five at a time, Animal. They're always two or three weeks ahead. Why do you watch game shows? I love game shows. Are you kidding? Next to soap operas, they're my favorite. Can't he be fired for that? <laughs> Where's Lou? Down there. Oh. Excuse me a second. Oh, you feeling any better? Next question. Yeah, uh, Lou, I want you to meet Detective Dan Staley. That's okay, don't get down. Dan wants to talk to Billy, says Billy Newman, and Art, it's Art Donovan, about the Robinson thing. Can you spare them for a couple minutes? Do I have a choice? Not really. Sure, I can spare them. Thank you. I'd like to start with a little lady first. Little lady? Sam's fighting words. Is this a bar that you frequent, Miss Newman? 
You mean, do I troll the bar? I mean, if you go in there frequently, was there anyone there that night that didn't belong? That sort of thing. No. Did you know Mr. Robinson from before? No. But you engaged him in conversation? Yes. What went on in your mind when you spoke to him? He was a total stranger. Look, I was with another guy. I see. No, you don't see. I wanted to ask Mr. Robinson a few questions. He did not want to answer them. That is the extent of it. And then he left? Right. Okay, let's go over that one more time. I've already told you everything I know. Look, Miss Newman, you were probably the last person who saw Mr. Robinson before the beating. Now, let's go over it again. We've been over it twice. Maybe three will be a charm. I doubt it. You okay? Yeah. Maybe tomorrow we could roll in one of those little cots. Uh, no, Charlie, please. Don't roll in anything. I'm gonna be fine. Yeah. Yeah, okay, just, just hold it a second. Chet Wilkie of Archer Pools? I'll take it. Put in a swimming pool, Lou? No. You know, swimming is good for the back. What about drowning? Hello, Chet, how are you? Oh, good. Hey, listen. Anybody would have been glad to help. You're welcome. What do you mean, do I have homeowner's insurance? Easy, Judge. Don't worry. No, no hurry. I already made you late, Charlie. All right, it's not important. I like to get here early. But... Yeah, but you said 7.45, and I wanted to be out in front at 7.45. Get it. It's the socks. Putting on your socks, that's the hard part. You have to roll back on the bed and time it just right. Oh, boy, that must hurt. Oh, then I knew you were trying to drive so carefully to not hit the bumps. That's uh, such a pain. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't drive carefully enough. Uh, uh, yeah. Tomorrow, I am going to arrange to get to your place five minutes later. <laughs> You're gonna put yourself through this again tomorrow? That's great. Oh, Charlie, that's great. I'll get up five minutes earlier. You don't have to. I will. Yeah. Morning, Lou. Morning, Art. You in early, or were you unable to get up from your chair last night? I couldn't sleep. Oh, no. Will you look at this? I'm being sued for gross negligence by an alcoholic pool salesman. Mr. Wilkie? Yeah. He's selling swimming pools door to door. Door to door, huh? What does he do? Keep him in a little attaché case? To make a long story short, on his way down the stairs, probably in an alcoholic haze, he trips and falls. Then he's got the nerve to sue me. 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 The guy that took him to the hospital. Well, that's what you have homeowner's insurance for, so he can't sue you for your last penny. I don't have any homeowner's insurance yet. Oh. Well, that's what it's for. Billy Newman. Yeah, are you the one who wrote the story about Elliot Robinson, about how the cops are having trouble finding out who did it? Uh, who is this, please? Never mind. Just meet me at the Blue Terrace Bar on Figueroa. I got some information for you. How will I know who you are? I'll be all alone in the booth furthest from the door. Do you want to leave me a name? Come now. I'll be waiting. Look, uh... You are interested in the guy who muscled Robinson, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I'm one of the guys who did it. <laughs> Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and Managing a family's toughest. AMD returns to Lou Brandt. I wouldn't give you any clue at all, huh? Nope, just said he was one of the guys who roughed up Robinson. Sounds risky. I don't think you should go there alone. Oh, it's Charlie. But if I take somebody with me, I'm afraid whoever this guy is will be scared off. What's the point? Your safety is more important, Billy. 
We don't even know how much this guy's got to tell. If he is, in fact, the guy who roughed up Robinson, it could be plenty. If he is indeed the guy who roughed up Robinson, he could be dangerous. Well, if I go with armed guards, we'll never know. Blue Terrace on Figueroa, huh? It's kind of a seedy neighborhood, isn't it? Yeah. Take Animal. There's no chance they'll notice him down there. Yeah. Here's your name. Art McQueen. What about him? He's the guy who hired me and another guy to beat up on Robinson. Art McQueen? Why? <sighs> What's the difference? Look, what I'm saying is that Art McQueen hired me to beat up Elliot Robinson. I want you to print that. Why do you want me to print that? Queen Welsh on my final payment. I can't exactly take him to small claims courts. So I want to hurt him back. You print what I told you, you'll hurt. You'll have to give us your name or we can't print anything. You can print it. Not without your name. There's no way. You'll find one. John Kennedy was not the first president to challenge his people to, quote, ask not what your country can do for you, but rather what you can do for your country. Who was the U.S. president who originally hurled this challenge? You have 20 seconds and good luck. Go. You gotta be kidding. Sounds like it could be Andrew Jackson. I think Lincoln. Come on. Warren G. Harding. Time is up, but I'll still still give you a shot at it. Take a guess. Woodrow Wilson? I'm terribly sorry. No, the answer is Warren G. Harding. Hey, how many of you folks out there knew that answer, huh? Well, it's too bad, Elliot. You didn't get the $10,000, but you won $350 in cash on that trip to Reno. So congratulations, then. Good luck. It's frightening how much I know. Not the image of a guy who hires hitmen, is it? Folksy TV personalities? Part of the community, 20 years in the same location. What kind of feeling did you get from the guy you talked to? Creepy. I was afraid of him. That could have just been the place, you know. I was afraid to swallow my beer. Well, we can't run with what he told you, Billy. Not just on his say-so. I know. I'm hoping to get something tomorrow from the Queen. Lou Grant's residence. Yeah? Yeah, just a sec. It's Mr. Wilkie from Archer Pools. Yeah. Yeah, I got your letter. Amicable settlement? No, I, I don't think so, Chad. In court? Right. I'll be the guy with your throat in my hands. I'm a public property woman. A fellow never gets used to being slandered, but you've got to kind of learn to roll with the punches, you know what I mean? <laughs> The charges Elliot Robinson raised were more than slander, though. Well, I was trying to have the trial moved up. Get it over with. Clear my name. I just hate my family having to go through this, you know? Why do you think uh, Robinson would go forward if he felt he didn't have a case against you? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. It's the nature of the man, Miss Newman. Yell, scream, anything, as long as it's loud and it gets into the newspaper. But sooner or later, he would have had to deliver some evidence against you. Elliot Robinson is a phony, a publicity hound. In case after case, when the time came to deliver on the evidence, he'd make up some story about the FBI or the CIA trying to silence witnesses. Who knows what excuse he'll come up with in my case. Like a coma? <laughs> I would like to hold off hiring Mr. Johnson at least until the end of the month. Sounds fair. 
And I've also made a tentative decision on the Olympics. What's it going to be, the 440 or the decathlon? Uh, uh, I was a long-distance runner in my youth, you know. Lonely, huh? Oh, exhausting. <laughs> anyway, I would like to wholeheartedly support the Games. And if they could guarantee the taxpayers wouldn't be liable for the cost overruns, I'd be much more favorably disposed. Oh, and see if they can eliminate the smog as well. We'll stay on it. Fine. Well, that's all from my side, gentlemen. Do you have any questions? Lou has a question. I do. About that legal matter. Oh, Charlie, no. I don't want to bother her with that. Bother her with what, Mr. Grant? Uh, no, it's nothing. It's not nothing. Some guy tripped and fell on Lou's lawn, and now he wants to sue him. But go ahead, you tell it, Lou. You just told it. Well, these kinds of uh, nuisance lawsuits, I think it's always best to let the insurance companies settle. Don't you agree? Well, I'm, I'm buying my house, and I haven't picked up my homeowner's insurance yet, so I'm kind of liable. And Lou needs a good attorney. Jacob Bauman is good. But doesn't he represent banks and governments? And me, Mr. Grant. If I call him, he'll find the time. There you go, Lou. Thanks. Driscoll says they found this guy in a drainage ditch out by Dodger Stadium. Wonderful. One off season, and people just go to pieces. Any theories as to who he was and why he was dumped? He said it looked like a contract job. Clean and definite. Budget meeting. What got there? Pictures of a corpse. Whew. Not for us. Why do they always ignore the ones with real value and print the ones with surface slickness and appeal? What are we talking about here? Women? Voters? Who? Editors. They got no imagination. Oh, that's nice, Cy. Si. Yeah, something a little different, I thought, from the annual beach crowd from a helicopter number. Forget it. I went with this. Beach crowd from helicopter. Stock shot number 641 in your program, number one in your editor's heart. I hate that shot, but I knew as soon as I shot it, it would make the paper. Hmm. Where's this from? Oh, uh, oh, a uh, cops found some guy out behind Dodger Stadium. You got one that's closer on his face? Someone you know? Hard to tell. Mm -hmm. Anything unusual about this guy, besides the obvious? Mm, let's see. Uh, no, nothing that really... Uh... Oh, there was one thing the cops said. Uh, he had one leg much thinner than the other, like the guy had polio or something. It's still hard to tell. It looks like him, but it was dark in that bar. I know. But I figure with the resemblance and the limp, it's worth a shot. When he's right, he's right. Show us 453, would you, Herb? Now, are you sure you want to go through with this, Miss Newman? Well, it's not something I'd want to say for Saturday night, but I can handle it, if that's what you mean. Women don't always like the sight of their bodies. And men do? That's him. Who? The guy I thought it was. Well, wait just a second. Did he have this mole here on his right cheek? Yes. Did you look at his hand? Did you notice if he had all his fingers? This man doesn't appear to have any fingers missing. Oh, I know that. I just wanted to be sure that the man that you talked to had all of his. You're purposely doing this, aren't you? Yeah. I gotta tell you, though, you're a very gutty little lady. And you're a big creep. Miss Newman. If you know who that man is, I'd like you to tell me. I don't know who he is. But you said that... I just said he's who I thought he was. Then you do know who he is. Yes. But how do you know him? He called me and I met him and he told me that he had been hired to beat up Elliot Robbins. But why would he tell you a thing like that? He said that the guy who was supposed to pay him well shone it and he was trying to get even. Would you like to tell me his name? Art McQueen. Not the TV guy. 
That isn't enough to tie McQueen into an assault charge, is it? It's a murder. You mean of him? Plus Elliot Robinson. He died this afternoon. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on AMD. Returns to Lou Grant. The guy's name was Sam Cork, a small time hood, few convictions for extortion, vice, assault, very undistinguished career. Anything to tie Corcus in with McQueen? No, nothing. Corcus was the kind of guy who'd been living on borrowed time from the day he was born. So the only person connecting Corcus and McQueen is you, Billy. I guess so. Okay. Let's run with it. That's a hell of a story. All right, but before printing the accusation against McQueen, I want you to talk to him and get his reaction. It's only fair to let him respond to charges like that. We'll see him and then write it. Oh, oh, I just remembered something that Corkers told me that day. He said that there were two of them that beat up on Robinson. Wonder if the other guy got paid. I imagine so. He might even be the guy that killed Corkus. Well, I hope he likes my story. Remember, I need your car at 1 o'clock. What for? Come on, you told me I could borrow it today. Remember, I have to be in Pacoima. Mine's in the shop. Rossi, I'm on my way to a TV studio to talk to Art McQueen. Oh, well, how long is that going to take? I don't know. I should be back at 1. I'll do my best. Yeah, can you make it 12.30? I don't want to be late. Yeah. Well, that sort of wraps it up for this day, but uh, we'll see you all tomorrow now. And in the meantime, remember to love your neighbor, but not when your neighbor's spouse is around. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> They should put you through your paces out there, don't they? You really have to do this four more times today? Sure the heck beats selling vacuum cleaners, which I did at one time. Really? I was a traveling salesman in the South. Late 40s, early 50s. <laughs> you know, it may sound corny, but... Well, those were the years I developed a, a great understanding for the American people. I met some wonderful folk. Did you ever meet Sam Corcus? I don't believe so, no. A small-time hood... His body was found near Dodger Stadium yesterday. I don't go to ball games with small-time hoods. He told me that before he died, you paid him to beat up Elliot Robinson. Oh, my Lord. It's unbelievable. Me? Are you sure? That's what he told me. And you believed him? That's what he told me. Did you know Sam Corcus? No. Maybe you knew him under another name. Do you really think a person in my position would hire someone to do what that fellow did? I don't know. I don't know whether or not you're planning on printing that lie, but can you imagine what that accusation could do to my life? It takes so little for an irresponsible person to do so much harm. And I have to urge you in the strongest possible way to please, please be careful what you write. Somebody's life may depend on it. It wasn't that I didn't enjoy being the United States ambassador, because I did. It was just that I could no longer support the policies of President Eisenhower. I see. I told him directly, I said, Ike, as a matter of conscience, I have to resign. I've always felt he respected me for it, too. I don't see how he couldn't. Well, I feel a man does what a man does. Whether you're talking to the president, senator, common man off the street, treat them all the same. Of course. I had a lot more trouble with Lyndon Johnson, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, enough of me and my petty grievances. Margaret tells me you have a legal dilemma. What can I do for you, Mr. Grant? Well, this guy fell down on my steps. Where have you been? Rossi, it's 12.15. The guy in Pacoima moved my appointment up. The car's a little funny starting. You have to kind of wiggle the key in the ignition. It'll finally start. Right. You're low on gas. Oh, yeah. Hey, Rossi, you'll probably have to get some gas. Oh, terrific. Remind me never to borrow a car from you again. I will.
want some coffee? You said I'll get it. No, no. It's good for me to move around. Yeah, I can tell. Does I look like my back is bothering me? More like your whole body is bothering you. Mm. Did you clear up that nuisance suit yet? I hope so. I got Mrs. Pinchon's lawyer. He's the former ambassador to Paraguay under Eisenhower. Sounds like the perfect kind of a guy for this case. He sent off a very sharp letter. We'll give you back off. Yeah. When the ex-ambassador to Paraguay speaks, people listen. Back so soon? What are you trying to do? Get me killed? What are you talking about? Your car is a death trap. The brakes went out on Hill Street. What happened? What did you do to my car? Do? I didn't do anything. I went to put my foot on the brakes and it hit the floor. Why did you tell me? Tell you what? The brakes were working perfectly fine when we drove back from the studio. What happened to my car? Your car can be fixed. I could have been killed. You're gonna be killed. What's your problem? What's your problem? Well, he wrecked my car. I did not wreck your car. I was driving your car and your car's brakes went out. Well, you must have done something. Well, I didn't do anything. Well, somebody did. What are you saying? Well, I don't know. I just think it's awfully strange that my car's brakes were working perfectly fine one moment and they they go out the next. Could anybody have tampered with them? Why? Why would somebody want to tamper with my brakes? Come on. I couldn't have left my car for more than two or three minutes. It's just my own paranoia because Art McQueen wouldn't have anyone tamper with my brakes. First of all, how could anyone do it so fast? And second, if anything happened to me, you guys would go directly to McQueen. So I don't like having my reporters in danger. That's why I called you. Mm -hmm. I'm not in any danger. Am I? You could be. You know, your woman's intuition might not be too far off here. A woman's intuition? Let it pass, Brian. You said that Corcus told you there was another man involved in a Robinson beating, right? Yes. Supposing he wanted to silence you. Well, you see, that's ridiculous, because I don't know who he is. But he doesn't know that you don't know who he is. Oh, I see. And there is some possibility that she's in danger. Right. Now, I have a line on a couple of men who are known to hang out with Corkers. I just haven't been able to bring them in. Can you give her protection? I don't need protection. Yes, you do. I can't do that. I cannot guarantee protection. But in another week, a grand jury is going to convene to indict Art McQueen. Now, if you'd agree to testify, then we'd have to protect you. I'm the only connection you have between McQueen and the killing? No, but you're the best one. I'd be willing to tell a grand jury what Corcus told me. Okay, Lou? Okay. Are you sure? I mean, you're not going to change your mind a half a dozen times. I said I was going to testify, and I'm going to testify without any doubt. Most probably. You call in now. I know we're not allowed to know where you are, but you call in every day. Just think of it as a vacation with pay. Hmm. And a guy with a gun outside your door. Give you a chance to catch up on all those spy novels that you've been wanting to get to. Give you a chance to watch some game shows. I can hardly wait. Goodbye. See you guys. Take care of yourself, Billy. Remember to call. Hello, Chet. Your lawyer got the letter from mine. Good. Did he mention that he was the former ambassador to Paraguay? Settle out of court? No, I don't think so. Not a nickel, Chet. Not a penny. going to be my guard. You get me. Why you? I thought I was supposed to have a woman guard. Well, you were, but she just called in sick. It's probably one of those female things. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on b and I can't believe out of the whole police force, you're the only person available for this assignment. 
It's my case. And my luck. Listen, it's not my idea of heaven on earth, you know. Why don't we at least try to make the best of it, okay? I think I'd rather take my chances on the street. I don't know why I can't just stay in my apartment. You can't risk it. They know where you live. That's why we're going to a hotel. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. My boxer shorts are in the laundry. Nothing I haven't seen before. Your wife's? Never, Never been married. married. No sense buying a book if you've got a library card. Why buy a cow when you can milk one through the fence? My sentiments exactly. You forgot your mouthwash. I won't be needing it. Can I help you with that? No way. I think you have no alternative, Mr. Grant. You'll have to settle. I don't want to settle. Well, my fault. Well, it's really not a question of that right now. If it's not a question of that, what is it? How do we get you out of this in the simplest, cheapest manner? What about the principle? What principle is that, Mr. Grant? That I'm innocent. This clown came to my house uninvited, drunk, and why the hell am I responsible if he falls down the stairs? Because they're your stairs, Mr. Grant. I came to you because you have the best legal mind in the city. And we're giving you the best legal advice we can. Settle. This, this is crazy. I suffered more pain than he did. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? Huh? What if I refuse to settle? Then he will press forward with his suit, I can guarantee that. I've talked to his attorney. He's a very determined man. Countless hours can be spent by me and my staff in your defense. At hundreds of dollars an hour, your defense could very quickly add up to as much as Mr. Wilkie is suing you for. I'd rather pay you than him. There's always the chance you could pay us and him. It's not inconceivable you could lose this case. Settle, Mr. Grant. We're lucky to be getting off this lightly. How lucky are we? Five hundred dollars. There's a car right behind us. I just wanted to make sure they weren't tailing us. Got a little nervous, huh? Not until I got in the car. I see you've got those new computers in your offices. Yeah, we got them this year. Makes it a lot quieter than when I was down there last. Oh, what were you doing there? Just police work. Uh, busting into somebody's desk so you could get their files? If you reporters would cooperate with us a little bit more, we wouldn't have to do that. Have to do that. Are you aware of a document drawn up in Philadelphia in the late 1700s called the Constitution, which guarantees freedom of the press? It also guarantees us the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, Miss Newman. When law-abiding citizens are spied on and wiretapped... Police only finger dangerous criminals for surveillance. As long as you're clean, you've got nothing to be bothered about. Well, I'm clean, but I'm still bothered. How's the back, Lou? Better. It only hurts when I'm sitting, standing, or lying down. Well, I wish I could tell you that we've got an easy day, but things are really hopping out there. What have you got? Well, Altamira Police Department's under heavy fire. An internal investigation has produced evidence of fraud on almost every level. Misconduct, neglect. Uh, send Burroughs out there. Billy called in. Uh, oh. How's she doing? Well, she says she's all right, but I'll bet she's bored out of her mind. I think she could probably use the rest. You gotta be kidding. The use of nuclear weapons is absolutely unthinkable. Even discussing it is bizarre. I can think of certain situations where the strategic use of limited nuclear weapons could be very effective. Yeah, so effective that it could kill millions of innocent people and maim God knows how many future generations. It's obviously something that nobody wants. Not even you. We're not the only ones with nuclear capabilities, Billy. But if we ignore the fact that the other countries are willing to use their weapons, we got our heads in the sand. So you could actually rationalize a preemptive strike of American nuclear weapons? To reestablish our superiority? You betcha. My God, is that scary. Oh, come on, Billy. Admit it, will you? Aren't you just a little sick and tired of seeing the United States brought to its knees by some nut in the Middle East who won't let us have our oil? Our oil? We helped them drill for it. They'd still be riding their camels over the top of it if it wasn't for us. Are you hungry? How can you talk about food when we're on the brink of World War III? I'm hungry. Did you swear off food during the Vietnam War? 
Okay, I could use a little snack. You want to call room service? You just want to go out and kill something. <laughs> From service, this is room 204. You send up two steaks, rare or medium rare. I want a vegetable plate. I should have known. Should have known what? I should have known you were one of those. What do you mean, one of those? You think you know me that well, huh? You think just because I'm a vegetarian, I'm also a bleeding heart, liberal pacifist. And you for solar energy, too, right? You bet I am. <sighs> room service, make that one rare steak and one vegetable plate. Masterpiece Theater. Pretty good, you know that? I hate the fact that you like Masterpiece Theater. Why? Because so do I. Thanks a lot. Taking quite a long time with that room service. Well, it must be my vegetable plate. <laughs> Stay back. This is Detective Staley. I've got a TA and CPI at 3200 North Ardmore. Yeah, possible injury, possible fire. Right. Looks like it's on fire. I told you to stay back, didn't I? Sure, Chief. You know, nobody got out of that car. They could be hurt. Life will blow up any minute. Better get down there. Listen, you keep the door locked. Don't open it for anybody, you hear? Lou, it's me, Billy. I'm sorry. Did I wake you? No. I was watching Masterpiece Theater. Lou, it's over. Not here, then. Billy, where are you? Uh, I can't tell you. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm in a hotel, I can tell you that much. Mm hmm. So, what can I do for you? Well, I just kind of wanted somebody to talk to for a couple of minutes. There was an accident down on the street in that... Uh, that detective that's been guarding me, he went down to see if he could help out. He left you alone? No, oh, it's all right. I'm okay. He just went down for a few minutes. You sure it was an accident? Not just an excuse to get him out of the room. Oh, Lou, come on. I called you for reassurance. I don't think you should be alone. There's nothing to worry about. Who's there? Who's there? Room service. <laughs> it's room service. We called about an hour ago for some food. Don't open the door. Lou, it's room service. We did call. I don't care. Don't let anybody in. Uh, just leave it outside the door. We'll get it later. Somebody's got a sign for it. Somebody's got a sign for it. Lou, really, it's okay. It's room service. Just a sec. Billy! Billy! I told you not to let anybody in here. Unless you want to end up dead, you better learn how to take orders. Yes, sir. Sorry, fella. It's okay. You've seen worse. Here. Billy! But... What's going on there, Billy? I... Billy! 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 Hello? Hello? I just got off the phone with Driscoll from the cop's house. They picked up the second suspect in the Robinson case. Hey. When they told him that Billy had already implicated Art McQueen, he could not wait to corroborate her testimony. That's great. That's going to take a lot of pressure off of Billy. Isn't that good news, Lou? Yeah. What's the matter with him? He just wrote a check for $500. To that guy who fell down your steps? Why did you do that, Lou? I never would have paid that guy. Yeah. You did the right thing, Lou. I wonder. I need to give that guy the satisfaction. So would I. Paying him is not an admission of your own guilt, Lou. I mean, all right, it's unjust, it's unfair, but you've got to be philosophical about it. $500 is a small price to pay to get him off your back. The 
small price is getting larger. How's that? A bill from my attorney for $700. Good legal advice doesn't come cheap. <clears throat> Well, how did I do? You have a tendency to ramble a little, but your answers were very clear. You handle yourself very well up there, and you look good. Not too much makeup. No. You were a very credible witness. Well, I'm glad I didn't embarrass you by wearing my slit skirt. <laughs> you don't even have a slit skirt. Right, we liberal vegetarians never wear them. You know, I shouldn't tell you this, but just between the two of us, after what I heard in there, I'd be very surprised if they didn't nail McQueen. Can I drop you at work? No, the paper's just a couple blocks away. I think I'll walk. Well, I guess I won't be needing your protection anymore. Billy, I've been with you for a week now, and I've learned who you are and how you think. And I've come to like you enough to want to tell you something. Yes? Buy yourself a gun. I don't believe it. Uh... <laughs> I'm just kidding, really. Hey, <laughs> take care of yourself, will you? You too. Bye. Bye. He's the son of a rabbi who became the great Houdini. See his magic tonight on Biography. Now, is a house haunted or just crime-ridden? Cops check it out on Police Story, next on A&E.